recently made a video going over the updates to the Twitch integration for 7 Days to Die for Alpha 20. If you watched it, you know that the changes to the integration are awesome. The only thing is, every streamer I know is always looking to make their stream unique and engaging to their own community needs. One way you can do that is through simple edits of the XML code to create your own spawns that chat can trigger through commands in chat or through events such as raids, subs, gifted subs, donated bits, or even channel points. Creating your own unique spawns can engage your audience in your gameplay and potentially increase retention of new viewers. If you are new to editing XML, you will want to have Notepad++ or a similar program downloaded to your computer and ready to go before you begin this tutorial. A link to a video showing you how to do this is on the tab above and in the description below. The first step is to open up the correct files you need in Notepad++ to make it easier to edit. Open up your game files on whatever drive you store your game. I keep mine on my E drive, but if you are like many people, your game will be automatically stored on your C drive. Go to Steam Library, Steam Apps, Common, 7 Days to Die, Data, Config, and then you will want to open up three different files into Notepad++, the Game Events, Twitch, and Twitch Events files. So if you are looking for the fastest way to add commands, you will want to plan spawns that have a zombie, animal, or group of these that already exist in the game. For example, I could wish to spawn one zombie party girl, or five skateboarders, or a group of animals for a zoo. Open up game events and scroll down to where you see actions in green. You want to put your spawns under this section. One fast way to get there is to press Ctrl and F and find hashtag spawn underscore standard. Now let's say you want to spawn a single party girl for your chat and let them spawn her specifically. You will copy the code for spawn standard and change pieces of it. You need to give it its own unique sequence name, change the zombie value to zombie party girl, and change the alert sound to be something close enough to match, like zombie female alert. Perhaps you want to do a more complex spawn instead and would like to spawn multiple animals or zombies, such as in a zoo. This code is longer and more complex, but you can copy and paste and edit the pieces you need. I have an example in my Google Doc link below. Take that and copy to edit the sections that you want. Name the action sequence to a unique name. Then for each of the spawn entity actions that you want to use, choose the zombie or animal that you want to spawn. And in the spawn count section, the number that you want of them to spawn. So for example, in this spawn zoo event, I have two vultures, one bear, one mountain lion, and one wolf spawning. Again, adjust the sound alert at the bottom to be something that makes sense. In this case, perhaps bear alert and you are all set to move on to creating a new trigger for your event. Then you need to head to either the Twitch XML file or the Twitch events XML file, depending on how you want to let your community spawn them. If you want them to spawn with chat commands using their earned points, you would use Twitch XML. If you want them to spawn using channel events, such as raids, subs, gift subs, bits, or channel points, head to Twitch underscore events XML, or you can even choose to do both. In the Twitch XML, there are 13 lines of code that you can either pause and copy off of my screen here, or you can look in the description below for a link to a Google Doc that has an example of this code and several others that you might find useful. The last couple lines of code you can delete if you don't use them. For example, one is single day or special only, as these will automatically be false unless you say otherwise. However, I'm giving you the entire code so it's easy to turn on special points only or only using it once per day if you want those kinds of options. You will need to give your action a unique name. I have given this one the name of Twitch underscore Party Girl. Same thing with the command. Make sure it follows the pattern of your other commands as I have done with hashtag spawn underscore Party Girl. Then go down a couple lines and change the event underscore name to be whatever you call this event in the game event file. Be very careful with this. Copy and paste for accuracy if you have some that are similar. Change your default cost to be what you would like it to cost in points in your chat. What game stage you would like it to start being available at. And then most people will keep the rest of these the same as I have them here. But just so you know what they do. Add underscore cooldown. If true, adds to the cooldown bar at the top of your spawns. If false, it does not. Cooldown underscore blocked. If true, does not allow this action during a cooldown. If false, it does allow it during a cooldown. 
waiting blocked. If true, does not allow this action when the bar says waiting. If false, it does allow it during waiting. Is positive. If false, it is a good action and will show up as blue. If true, it is a bad action and will show up as red. Spawns are already normally red, so that line isn't necessary for spawns typically, but if you want to change it because you have something like spawn underscore lunch or something and you are giving people rabbits or chickens, for example, um, you might want it to be in blue. Single day, if true, will allow only the action to be used once per day. If false, it can be used multiple times per day. Special only, if true, will use special points instead of regular, and chatters must have special points in order to use them, either through spending bits to earn them or winning the pimp pot to earn them. If false, like most spawns, they can use regular points earned by chatting. If you want to add your command to a random event like the random tough zombies or random animal zombies that randomize what's available per day, you can do that as well using the property name random underscore group and the value of either spawn underscore tough, spawn underscore animal, etc. If you have seen my previous video outlining how to quickly turn on the Twitch underscore events for subs, gift subs, channel points, raids, and bits, this next section should be pretty easy. But if not, I will link that video in the description below for you. If you wish your created spawn to be able to be used for bits, you would go to the bits section and copy one of the examples already there or one that I have in the Google Doc file linked in the description below. Give it a unique event title, whatever you want it to say in chat when it happens, and for event name, write whatever the game event was called. Again, copy and paste if needed for accuracy. Then choose the lowest number of bits to start this action and the highest number of bits to start this action. For example, if you want it to occur anywhere between 69 bits and 100 bits, you would put 69 as the start and 100 as the end. Similarly, if you wanted your created spawn to occur for a sub, gifted sub, event, channel point, or raid event, copy the example and paste below in that section of the file. Edit the title and match your event underscore name to the game event you created. Then start amount and end amount for regular subs will be the number of months they have been subbed for, and for gift subs will be the number of subs they give. For channel points, be sure your channel point title is exactly the same as the channel point redemption you have set up on your channel. For raids, the start and end amounts are equal to the number of raiders. Each of these have some options for you. Safe allowed, if true, means that this is allowed to occur when you are in a safe zone. If false, it will wait until you leave. Cooldown allowed, if true, will allow this to occur while you are on a cooldown. If false, it will wait until you are out of cooldown. Vote allowed, if true, will allow this to occur during a vote. If false, it will wait until you are done with a vote before triggering. When you are done, save your files and then go into the game to test your work. I highly recommend being in god mode when testing so you can see the spawns easily without worrying about dying. To test a Twitch action spawn, I recommend putting your Twitch actions as progression off so things show up accurately. If you have chosen to put your spawn in a random category, you will need to turn progression on and off until it shows up in the list. Set cooldown by typing hashtag set cooldown space zero in your chat. Then you are able to type the command that you wish to test in your Twitch chat just like your chatters would do. For Twitch event spawns, you can test offline easily with commands in your Twitch chat. For subs, hashtag redeem underscore sub space the person's name, space the number of months. For gift subs, hashtag redeem underscore gift sub space the person's name, space the number of gifted subs. For bits, hashtag redeem underscore bits space the person's name space the number of bits. For raids, hashtag redeem underscore raid, space the person's name, space the number of raiders. For channel points, simply use the channel points offline to test. If everything is working properly, you are good to go. If you are working on a server, make sure you transfer your game events and Twitch files to the server files. Your Twitch underscore events file is local no matter where you play, but the other ones are not and will need to be uploaded to the server before using them. 
I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what kinds of spawns you create or other types of instructional videos you would like to see more of in the comments below. Like and subscribe for more videos like this one and check out some more of my videos like this one, reviewing all of the new features of the Twitch integration for Alpha 20.